Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a Nintendo 64, Japanese. Um, one fun thing I found with the, uh, the N64s is that you can actually, once you remove the cartridge slot, you can plug in uh, US or Japanese games. PAL games don't work, they're a whole different thing. But this one has a bit of a problem. Uh, we've actually got, let's see if we can get a bit of a close up there. Just have a look in there. Oh, look at that focus. There we go. Almost, there we go. Now you can see it. There's what looks to be corrosion inside the slot. So this unit's probably been liquid damaged at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and just clean out the slot with, um, what have I got on hand? I've got a bit of paper towel, um, a uh, plastic card, which is a 922 part on it. So that must have been from when I used to work for, or rather when I used to work, <laughs> working's for losers, no offence everyone. Um, so I'm going to pretty much wrap the card in that and then just sort of poke it in there and uh, see what happens. So at the moment we do get power. I haven't taken it completely apart, which is probably a bad idea um, to not take it apart, because if I have a look, there's probably more liquid damage to other parts. Although if you look at the, um, the overall design of the N64, it's a pretty solid looking machine. Um, the PCB is not terribly big, which is quite impressive for, I guess, the technology of the time, especially when you compare it with uh, some of its competitors, such as the uh, Sega Saturn and uh, to a lesser degree the PlayStation. Although remembering that they did decide to uh, use an external power pack, which in, in sort of cheating in, in my book, but that's fine. So yeah, this one was only about $20 and 50 cents from memory. I feel bad for the guy I outbid. He, he dropped a bid in about five minutes before the auction ended and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna bid 30 and then it only went up 50 cents which sucks for him. Means he missed out by 50 cents. But that's fine, because now I get to tinker with it. So I'm gonna try cleaning this slot, giving it another go, see what happens. If it continues to not work, I'll take it apart and dig a little deeper. Let's see what happens. Oh, and just one more thing. I'm using methylated spirits here in Australia, but overseas you'll probably wanna use iso, I mean, ideally you'd wanna use isopropyl. Um, at least 7%. Um, methylated spirits over here isn't contaminated with whatever makes it purple. Just a reminder for those in the States who are stuck with awful purple. Anyway, you just stab at it, just lift out, pop it in, lift it out. It's pretty simple. Just make sure you don't use a card that has a thickness bigger than the uh, fingers on a cartridge. This one's actually quite thin. Anyway, let's give this a go. Let's hook it in. Oh man, I've got so many things out here. While we're out here, we've got a <laughs> Victor Saturn. Oh, this one's nice, look at that. This is cool. That cost me a pretty penny and it's got the memory card. Um, that's the N64, that's the other N64, they're both Japanese, so that works well. Nice and interchangeable. I don't know what happened on that paint job, but Hexagon, if you're watching, <laughs> it's now, it's now on video. It will exist until time itself ends. And of course, there's a massive stack of Playstations that I need to do something with. Here's the N64. Okay, so I'll pop the, uh, the jumper pack in there. If you don't have the jumper pack in, uh, this acts as a sort of like a Terminator. Uh, it doesn't actually have anything in it from what I understand. It's just a Terminator. Um, the expansion pack you can get, that's P-A-K, to be cool, hip down with the kids, is, gives you eight megabytes of memory total. So I believe there's four megabytes memory on board. Um, but without this in, well, I'll show you what happens. Oh, that's a good fit. I don't know how you actually had to remove these. I mean, there's a little notch in there. It was quite difficult to get it out of there. I don't know how, how the kids back in the day would have done it. Maybe they had a specific tool. Anyway, so you turn it on, you got your Paper Mario in there, which is a US game, which will work fine, and you get no video. Look at that, absolutely nothing, no signal. 
So what we do is we turn it off, pop the jumper pack back in. Not that I have tried this already, this is the first time. Power on. And it comes to life. Look at that, isn't that wonderful? So I can now play uh, Paper Mario, my... Well, it's not even my game. I've stolen it from the, the kid downstairs. But look at that, that's wonderful. I'm not gonna play too much of that because uh, Nintendo will give me a copyright strike because they are copyright trolls. Anyway, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. Uh, this has been a very simple fix for this little machine, which is quite thankful. So it will live on. Unfortunately now, I have two working N64s and I sort of wanted to just use this one to salvage bits for this one. But now they both work, so... <laughs> That's the problem. That's the problem. Oh dear. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed.